Hey, what's up guys? So uh, we have um, some good news here in the save. The good news is that we can't be relegated, um, the at least not this season. Uh, the not so good news is that we're not part of the champion group. So let me go ahead and show you kind of what's going on. Um, this is uh, one of those things I've been wondering about this uh, new 96 team version of World Super League for a while. As you know, I play kind of slow, and when I play slowly, it means I don't necessarily get as deep into some of this stuff as I probably could. And um, because we also have not exactly had the most success, this is really the first time that I've been able to look and see exactly how this works um, in the Premier League. So let's look at this together. This is, I guess, a little bit of a review of the um, editor data files. Very, very simple, I suppose. So what happened to us here in our competitions, we'll go over here to the Premier League and we'll show you what happens. There are two um, uh, stages to the Premier League. That's the way that this works. And uh, so it, there were four divisions, right? You had Premier League A, B, C, and D. And uh, we can look here at all groups, and this will show us what all four of those groups look like at once. 24 teams in each group. Now you'll notice that there are the first four teams that are highlighted. Those are not teams that are playing in Europe. Those are teams that are playing in the sort of champion round uh, that comes afterwards. And so here in Premier League A, you have Real Madrid, Frankfurt, Chelsea, and Manchester City that made it. And Arsenal, unfortunately, they were tied on points with Manchester City, but they just didn't quite make it. All right, so that's sort of the thing that you have going on. Very, very interesting because um, it can get really, really close in these races. You have to make sure that your goal differential is up high enough Make sure that you can move on to the next um, uh, round. At Feyenoord, um, kind of a surprising team to make it up to that uh, next round. Um, and uh, probably a couple others too if we uh, look around a little bit that are surprising. We wound up finishing just right smack dab in the middle. 14th place for Augsburg and uh, that's pretty good for us. So that gives you an idea of what happens. Now what happens here is it splits into um, a couple of different uh, groups. So uh, you have championship group and then upper table after that. Interesting stuff, isn't it? So you have 16 teams in the championship group, which means it's the top four from each one of those divisions, right? And this is where the champion is crowned. So the team with the most points at the end of the season will win. What happens is these teams have 15 games left to play, and so they play against the other 15 teams. And um, then at the end of it, when you have whatever it's going to be, like 38 games, I think it is, that's when you get to the end. That's when you know kind of where you stand. And your payout is based on all of that, and people will call you the champion or not based on that. So if you come into this in your Leipzig, the fact that you're in this group is <clears throat> a pretty good sign, but you're a long way away from hitting uh, where FC Bayern is. In other words, this creates a very strong incentive for teams to win as many games as they possibly can in the beginning rounds, right? You want to be where Byron is and um, only lose once. You don't want to come into this with like seven losses and think about all the points that you could have had or the six draws or something like that. There's no reward that comes from that. You just need to get the points. That's what makes this very difficult because you're against very good group, very good teams. And of course, to win this, you have to be able to beat all of the best teams in the world, right? So it's a little bit difficult. Just so happens that this time around, they're all in Europe, right? But you could see how if you played this for 10, 15, 20 seasons, how that might change. And that's one of the things that makes this really interesting. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, we're going to look over here at the upper table, which unfortunately we were also not able to make it into. This is going to be the next um, four teams in every group. So there is Arsenal at the top, all the way down to Leeds with 34 points. So if we go back here and we look at this again, we'll see that all of those are the five, six, seven, and eight teams. So you could finish fifth place and still not make it into that, you know, championship group and then have to uh, settle for something a little bit less. Um, and then you have two different mid uh, table groups of 16 teams each. That's where we are. We're in mid table group B on 30 points. Remember, there was there was one team with what was it like 33 or 34 points that was in the upper table group we just missed out on that but we're happy to be here because this means that we're not going to be relegated you cannot be relegated um uh, from this point which is an excellent thing that means that we have football in the premier league again next season which means we'll be able to hold on to our stars it means that uh, things are probably going to work out the way that we want them to so that's a really, really good sign for us as far as we're concerned, and it does mean that we have a lot of room to grow. 
Now, we have a lot of interesting teams in this group with us, including Celtic, who we're going to play tomorrow, and including the likes of PSG <laughs> and um, uh, Leverkusen and Nottingham Forest and a couple of other teams that are well-known, Köln and, and so on and so forth. Not necessarily the biggest teams in the world, but yeah, PSG, this is a, a good example of like what can happen to you, right? Because um, when you take a look at uh, sort of how PSG has played, I mean, you can see a whole bunch of these really, really close games, and then, okay, they lost to City at home for nothing, right? That was probably where the inquest came in. The problem that PSG has had is that PSG um, uh, sacked their manager, and uh, you can kind of tell where that happened because then they're losing to Stuttgart, Arsenal, Torino, draw with Monaco, lose to Arsenal in the uh, Super League Cup, uh, lose to Porto, and then lose to Milan in the uh, Champions League. Um, and uh, you can see this awful, awful run of form that they've had where they've lost all these matches by one point is because they have no manager. You can also see that we demolished them 11-2 to 2 in a friendly, but we're not going to talk too much about that right now. So um, that's kind of why PSG is all the way down here. It's an interesting place to play, and it does mean that a lot of these teams that are higher up will still lose their managers as you go along. Finally, we have the lower tables. There are two groups of these, and this will be so the final eight teams. And so, again, if we go back here to all the groups, you have one, two, three, four go into one, one, two, three, four in the next, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We barely made it to as part of that eight group. And then the final one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams are all the teams that are in danger of potential relegation. That's the way that this works. And so when we look at that, uh, there are not a lot of huge teams that could be uh, uh, potentially relegated. I mean, maybe Rangers could, but um, it's a little bit doubtful. Uh, looking through this, I mean, these are mostly teams that I think you would um, anticipate would probably wind up uh, being knocked down, right? I'm, I'm not seeing anything here that I look at and think this is a total shock. I think it's a couple seasons before you start getting the real shocks where you're like, how is this team being knocked down? I mean, Everton, but uh, whatever. So um, uh, that's kind of the way that this works here. It's pretty interesting. What happens here, of course, is these teams will only play against the teams in their group. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the bottom eight teams in every group that are relegated. That's the way that this structure works. So we'll go take a look down here at uh, this championship level. And we'll see what happens with the league structure. Well, you can see here there's a whole ton of of uh, these uh, leagues at this level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight of them. Remember, there are 16 slots, and what that means is that two teams are promoted. There is no promotion playoff. In other words, if you are in the bottom eight, bottom eight, you are relegated no matter what. There's no way to get yourself out of it, right? So um, that's the thing to, uh, to watch out for if you're playing uh, with this. There's a whole ton of money that comes in, by the way, if you're promoted, like a huge, huge amount. Meanwhile, in the uh, Premier League, uh, if you are uh, part of the lower table and you are relegated, you do have a parachute, but it's not quite as much as the m prize money you get for moving up. So there's not a whole bunch of uh, sort of monetary incentive there for you. You can see here the prize money listed up here in the upper levels is um, not completely listed out. We'd have to probably go into the editor data file and uh, sort of mess around with that to figure out what's going on. Anyway, so there you go. That's the way that it's set up, at least for the FM23 version of World Super League. Um, I always find this sort of thing um, in interesting to look at because it's interesting to see what different people come up with uh, for their um, projects and um, the sort of uh, ideas that they come up with in the end. Um, I think there are a lot of people out there who might be interested in creating their own data files. And uh, if you are, you really need to look into this sort of thing. And uh, you might be able to come up with some ideas for things that you could do with your own editor data file. Personally, I think it's uh, pretty fascinating stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm all in favor of more files and more editor data that looks sort of like this. Because it's a fascinating thing, you know, and um, it's one of those things that's kind of special to Football Manager. And we like stuff that's special, don't we? Anyway, that's it for now. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Bye.